your carburetor face and the snorkel and why you think it doesn't fit. Now, we have some customers who uh, don't think it's going to work and send us pictures. And we're like, please, try it. Uh, you can't, cannot hurt to try it. So, and then usually they find out, oh, it does work. It just, it, when they look at it, they think because of the way the hose is, it may not work. But typically, uh, with, with a few pictures, we can clear it up. And if, it's, if something has changed, uh, we'll fix it. Send you another one. As a matter of fact, we sent out one today to, where was that? Germany, yeah. Uh, Germans have a, was it a Honda? Was that a Honda? What was that? A Duschen, Duschen Schmerkerl. But uh, it was an engine we were familiar with, but uh, there was some oddity about it. And so now we have a special kit for that engine if someone orders from Germany. So if you're watching from Germany, uh, we got you covered. All right. So. That's the story on that. S send us a picture. Picture's worth a thousand emails, I always say. You think that was covered? Oh, good. It was covered. I think so. So, uh, another question. This is a lengthy one here. Oh, boy. This customer has a motor snorkel installed on a Honda mm -hmm. uh, EU 6500, and he uses two propane cylinders as fuel when not using gasoline. The setup runs fine, but today when I applied moderate load to the generator when using propane, the generator immediately shut off. When I put some gasoline into the generator and ran it using gasoline, the same loads have no effect on the generator. I reread the brochure and it says to apply an electrical load similar to the maximum load. Hold on, switching to uh, page two. <laughs> it is a lengthy the one. The generator will be operating under. So switch, uh, simulate the maximum load the generator will be operating under as part of the setup. This may be a dumb question, but how do I apply load to the generator if it shuts down right away? Is there a way to simulate the load when adjusting the load block? <clears throat> okay. Man, we got to do some backing up here. Um, for one, the first question we always ask is what cylinders are we using? Are, do we know that the cylinder or cylinders that we're hooking to have definitely been purged? Okay, so uh, we do have a purging chart. Hey, do you have your other camera going? Yeah. I can show the purging chart. Yeah. Get it in there somehow. Yeah. That's hard to do. All right. You see, you can see that the first purging of air from a new cylinder, you still only have 50% propane. So you're running off 50-50 propane air. Thing won't even run on first purgings typically. And you see the second purging, third, fourth, fifth. And so once you get down, you see my, I took this from one of our CSRs. You see the fourth purging. Uh, I, I believe that's what I told them is like, look, that's, that's, that should be plenty enough. For most engines and so the question comes back what what is purging well purging is uh, pressurizing the cylinder with vapor to a certain psi and then bleeding it off or burning it off and then do the same process and technically it should be done six times but uh, most people don't do that they'll get them uh, somebody will just shoot some liquid in it and call that purging and that's it'll work on a barbecue grill anything with a, a burner it'll work on uh, you'll get that blowtorch effect like on a grill but uh, so that's my first question make sure we have two cylinders that are properly purged now how to adjust the load block the best way is to ramp up if you can, like we have a load bank, so we'll start cranking up on the, on the amps. And as we're doing so, we're adjusting the load block. Well, you can do the same thing by adding equipment. As you add, be ready to adjust the load block till you get it up to the typical load you're gonna have. And once you're at that load, then you set it towards the lean side and then lock it and you're done you know lock the nut 
and you're finished. But uh, yeah, if you're just trying to apply an instant full load without having done that, it could be out of, you know, out of the parameters enough just to shut down. Too rich or too lean, shut it right down. So, and that's of course, if all the fuel lines and the regulators and everything else is correct. So uh, if it doesn't have, if the fuel line's too small, then it would just starve out. So again, in those situations, if, if the basic answers are, yeah, tanks are purged, the right size, then we ask that you please send us pictures of the fuel in to fuel out, which means from the cylinders to the hookup to the engine. And sometimes that'll tell us something that can help fix that issue. So uh, I think that answers that. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Yep, I believe so. And the thing on two LP cylinders is if it's a changeover regulator, it's only going to be pulling from one cylinder anyway. So that's our T checks. Uh, we have a T check assembly that has a T that uh, switches from side to side, whatever tank has the highest pressure. So uh, it's always going to be producing the highest amount of pressure possible. So. But anyway, those are the basics. Once you do the basics, you can usually get it taken care of. You're making all kinds of gyrations over there. What's going on? Where are we going? Oh, we got another question. All right, so we have a, a third question here. It says, I am in need of a wireless remote start for Honda EX4500. Do you sell such an item? Oh, absolutely. We have a really nice, uh, we just switched over to a different, um, we upgraded to a better module. Uh, it doesn't match the website pictures. And, the, and of course the question's still up on the screen, but we've switched up to a, uh, a module. Uh, the modules we had before, you were limited to it's a four button remote. You're limited to only one button at a time. Now you can do all four. So you can hold the choke, hold the start. And then once it starts, you can let off the choke and let off the start. So, uh, but yeah, it, we, we have it for all engines. We also have a automatic starting. You can convert any portable gasoline generator, uh, any portable propane natural gas generator. Uh, hook it to your house as a standby generator. Uh, we have a module to do that. So yes, we have modules to do all that stuff. So we are, and we have wired remotes. Some people like wired remotes. We have those as well. And we even do custom work if, if needed. We're not a fan of it, but we do it. You know, because we're just nice guys. All right. Any questions over the internet? Is, you think the internet's on today? How would you know? How would you know if the internet was working? Like, you can't go somewhere and see the internet. You can't drive downtown, go to a building, and say, "Hey, here's the internet." I, I don't even think it exists. I mean, no one can prove it. You know, how can you prove it? You can show what it does, but. You well, I'm just pontificating. Oh, by the way, we're always looking for dealers. If you want to be a dealer or you know someone who might, uh, you have a friend or somebody that does small engine repair or has any kind of mechanical aptitude, uh, these are really, I mean, we have a great program that people who go to boat shows and uh, hunting, uh, knife shows and whatever kind of shows like that, uh, home shows, they have those uh, you can set up a booth and man, I'll tell you what, you'll have a group hanging around, especially if we let, we let you borrow Wolfie, which I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> but, uh, Definitely not gonna let you borrow. <laughs> <laughs> no Wolfie for you. Uh, which you don't need it though. You could, we have other uh, devices you can use to, to present the product and it, it it's amazing the amount of people gather around. We did a, an Airstream show not long ago, and our table was like polluted with people compared to, to the other tables. So 
uh, they're waiting in line to ask questions. So that was that was pretty cool. So maybe we'll do that again this year. Doc, I was just going to let you know that some of our viewers uh, took the time to write in and tell you that it is working. Mm -hmm. Earl and Fred. What's working? The internet. <laughs> Thank you, Earl. <laughs> Maybe they're in charge of the internet. Are Earl and Fred in the United States? All right. What else we got, sir? Well, there are no questions over the internet, so uh, maybe it's time for the demonstration. Man, show's getting shorter and shorter. I'm glad I get the same pay. All right. So this is this is our uh, this is Wolfie. Mentioned Wolfie last week. Let me describe what Wolfie is. It's a obviously it's a tube, and it has two inputs. One is from the propane cylinder, and one is from an oxygen cylinder. Now, uh, of course, you know we're we're working on air in the room, and I have not fired this today. Just so you know. Uh, so right now it has ambient air in it, and the point of this demonstration is we have customers who swear that there's a problem with their engine regulator. Uh, they know they have propane and hey Sean, I hate to do this to you. On my desk in the back is a chart with limits of flammability. It's a triangle. I forgot to bring it up. It's back there. Uh, so there are limits of flammability and and as we all know to create a a flame, an explosion, you need spark, fuel, and air. So without one of those three, without a spark, you can have all the fuel and air you want in any, any combination you want, and you're not going to get a flame or an explosion or a fire. Uh, and with, of course, without air, you know, you can have fuel and spark and nothing's going to happen. And the same point if you have spark and air, with no fuel, uh, you're not going to get any explosion. So, point being, uh, for some reason, people can't understand that. They feel if they have gas, it should run, and that's not the case. And I always like to bring up, especially for the older folks, and, and you'll be dating yourself if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I can remember back in the 60s, early 70s, you'd flood out a car, and you take the air filter off, it's a four barrel carburetor, you can open the flies and look down in the manifold and you could see a puddle of gasoline laying in the manifold. Raise your hand if you've seen that. Very good, very good. Those, I bet you those two guys raised their hand because they're good guys. So anyway, so you had fuel, you can see, you can look down and see it. You're breathing so you know you have air and you know, if you want to grab a spark plug and see if you have spark, that's your, your business. But what, what did we do? Well, in that case, we put our foot to the floor, which people thought was odd because you're adding more gas. Well, in that case, uh, and don't, I know there's accelerator pumps and all that stuff, but forget all that. But what you're doing is keeping the flies wide open. And that's why it took a little while because the accelerator pump was trying to add more gas. But... Uh, and he couldn't find it. Okay, don't worry about it. Uh, so finally, it would start to catch because you're cranking, 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 and it, and it just blow black, and then finally it would run fine. And that's so with all that gas, it was flooding, and so that's that's the point. So it's the same. But the thing is, with propane and natural gas, it's a vapor. So the vapor will flood. Like I, I could throw a number at it, but but I. I'd say 10 times faster it'll flood on vapor than it will with liquid. So to prove the point, here's our empty air tube full of air and we're going to cap it off and uh, Wolfie is on and I'm gonna, there's a button here that will open up my lock off device and I'm going to count to six or eight seconds and you can see it's a small tube so it's not a ton of propane so here we go thousand one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five one thousand six one thousand seven one thousand eight that should be plenty of propane right 
Right. So we're going to uh, we're going to light up Wolfie here. And get my earplugs in. All right. Let's see what happens. Fire. Everybody's holding their ears. No wolf and Wolfie. Wolfie's too rich. Take the cap off. I always like to blow in it first just to make sure. Oh yeah. Now, that's why I like to put the pure oxygen in there. See? The reason I do this is uh, I caught Wolfie on fire last, last week, so. Uh. All right. Now, let's give Wolfie two ticks. One, thousand, two. Now I'm going to step over here. <laughs> we blew Wolfie up. Oh, sorry about that. So you see the... <laughs> so you see... <laughs> so you see, less is more. If people would just listen to me. Oh, poor, poor Wolfie. <laughs> we have an instant replay. <laughs> Oh man, poor Wolfie. <laughs> Instant replay was, was also blown away. <laughs> I told you to keep that camera away. Uh, see, I usually do it with the cap off the end because the air it just comes out, but I wanted to give a little more. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to fix Wolfie another day. But you see the point. That was only two two seconds t -t 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 done, and uh, and you've seen the the power, and that's the point with the right air fuel mix, and that's the per see. It took me a while to figure that out. Two clicks, perfect air fuel mixture. And so, uh, if you're a dealer, use that to teach your. <laughs> There's Wolfie everywhere. I'm glad I wore my safety glass. It was a joke, but. <laughs> So thank you for joining us on the Dr. Hughes Show. Please come back next week. Uh, I have another flammable device I'm going to show, but uh, it's totally under control. <laughs> this thing has got it. Wolfie has a brain of his own. So uh, like us on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. We'd appreciate it. You have a great day. And remember, hey, no matter what, always be a good human. All right? See you next week. Tuesday, Thursday, 2 o'clock, either one.